Every day, you and I get bombarded with negative news. And just like our bodies become what we eat, our minds become the information that we consume. If you want to stay positive, it's so important that you also listen to stories that inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we interview world-leading experts dedicated to solving the world's most pressing problems. And if you stick around, I promise you will not only be as informed as if you watch the news, you will feel uplifted, inspired, and have more positive energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... Hi and welcome. Today, Great.com Talks with Michelle Baker who is the director of philanthropy for fightcrc.org. And if you haven't heard of them before, they are an organization that are fighting to cure colorectal cancer. So if you're new here into this podcast, you definitely want to press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because today we're going to learn so much about what colorectal cancer is, what it's like to live in with the disease. Um, I have so many questions. So I'm very grateful that Michelle, that you're here and talking with us today. Great. Thank you so much, Emil. I'm so thankful to, to be here and talk about colorectal cancer. It's uh, definitely a disease that's um, very personal to me after losing my dad to colon cancer a little over 10 years ago. Yeah, I read that on, a, on your website. So I can just imagine the kind of drive that ignites in you to do something about this disease that is affecting yeah, a lot of people in the U.S. So before we dive into, I want to hear more about that and I want to hear more about uh, colorectal cancer, but could you describe Fight CRC just so we know a little bit more about your organization? Yeah, absolutely. Fight Colorectal Cancer is um, a leading nonprofit organization, a national nonprofit organization that focuses on um, advocacy on the state and federal level around policy change around colorectal cancer. We also support patients um, and anyone affected by colorectal cancer, so family members and caregivers um, with supportive services such as resources that are free for download off of our website for anyone. Um, and we also do a lot around research. We completely feel as um, if to cure colorectal cancer, there needs to be a big push around research. And so as an organization, we fund um, every year our researcher to do direct research around colorectal cancer. And to date, we've given over a million dollars to, to research um, specific to colorectal cancer. Um, and then again, we're also doing awareness of colorectal cancer. March is right around the corner. And so March is colorectal cancer awareness month. And so um, you'll see us activated online this year, um, really pushing things on social media to spreading awareness about getting screened for colorectal cancer, because it really starts at getting screened um, at the correct time because it is a preventable disease. Hmm. Yeah, then spreading that awareness and investing in research seems like really important tasks to do. So I want to learn more about screening, but to someone that is doesn't have much knowledge about what colorectal cancer is or maybe what it even means, uh, could you describe disease a little bit? Sure. Um, colorectal cancer is a disease, is a cancer that affects your colon and rectal area. Um, generally, people should be screened at the age of 45, but you also want to listen to your body. So if there's ever a change in your bowel habits, um, such as blood in your stool or, or constipation, um, or if you've got anemia or just different things that you feel are just off with you with your body, you definitely want to go and be seen by a physician prior to 45. So the key thing is to be an advocate for yourself and listen to your body. And if something doesn't feel right, go and talk to your physician and have that conversation. Um, but this is a, a cancer that is, um, there's multiple modalities and ways to get screened for colorectal cancer. So um, the, I would say that the gold standard is the colonoscopy. And that is where you would go in and you are sedated, um, light sedation, but you do have um, a scope um, that they do look through your colon and rectal area, and they are looking for pre-cancerous or just generally polyps. Um, and that is how colorectal cancer starts. So it begins with a polyp um, 
that can actually be removed during this procedure of a, col of a colonoscopy. And so it's basically that is a preventative procedure right there. So if you go and you are, um, are with the, getting your colonoscopy and a polyp is found, they can remove it at that time of the colonoscopy. Um, and then of course a biopsy is done after that to see if it's a precancerous or um, non-cancerous polyp. Um, if it's a precancerous polyp, then that basically has told you that you've most likely prevented yourself from getting colorectal cancer. Um, and it generally takes five to 10 years for a polyp to turn into cancer. Um, and so generally we do push um, for people to get screened at the appropriate age, talk with your physician on what type of screening is best for you. Like I said, there's different um, types of screenings out there. You've got stool tests. There's also a few blood tests out there. Um, so you just need to speak with your physician to find out what's the best test for you. For you. Got it. So it's mostly then people at the age of 45 and above that gets this disease and since it takes five to 10 years, you should do a scan then every five to 10 years to make sure you find it early. Well, it actually depends on when your first colonoscopy or your family history also kind of sets the standard. So right. for myself, since I have a family history, um, I was already known that I needed to get a colonoscopy early. So it just depends on who that person is to you as far as that blood relative who was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. So since it was my father that was diagnosed, I knew I had to be screened, you know, at an earlier age because he was only diagnosed. He was diagnosed at 56. So generally they take it 10 years back to when your children need to be screened. And so I was screened at an, at an earlier age um, because my siblings also had polyps. So there's lots of factors that go into your family history. And that's why speaking to your physician and kind of setting that standard for when it's appropriate for yourself to be screened is, is absolutely important and vital if you know you have a family history of colorectal cancer. Um, but in general, people should be speaking with their doctor around 45 to be screened at, for colorectal cancer. Got it. So are there, uh, apart from family history, are there other, do we know what is causing these kind of cancers? There's a lot of factors that go into colorectal cancer um, that researchers believe it's your environment, um, sedentary, um, you know, lifestyle. There's also smoking is a, also a factor. Um, and also a diet high in red meat, low in, low in fiber is also a factor, but there's multiple factors that they believe contribute to colorectal cancer. Um, and so that's why it's so important to make, to make sure you're getting screened at the appropriate age, because a lot of us fall into one of these buckets as far as a leading factor of colorectal cancer. Got it. So if someone then gets diagnosed with this, um, depending on how much the polyp has developed, of course, but what is the uh, expectancy? What is, yeah, how bad is it? It honestly depends. I, I would say I know 20 year survivors and that is a fantastic feeling to know people who have survived colorectal cancer, been diagnosed and they are, you know, 20 years out. And so it honestly, I would say there is no, for me, there's no standard expectancy. Every individual is different. Every individual is different how they respond to their treatment. Um, when they were diagnosed, if you're diagnosed, you know, in stage one, two, or three, it's a um, highly treatable cancer. And so it, it just actually just depends on the person, how they, when they were diagnosed and how they react to treatment. I feel like a kid now that is just asking more and more information questions, <laughs> but I'm really curious to understand oh. this disease. Like, so is it mostly men or, or is it equally men and women? I would say it's equally. I mean, there's a slight increase of men, but it's, it's basically equal opportunity um, disease in terms of how it affects both male and female. Um, there are certain um, race groups that are affected at a higher rate, certain, um, for example, Black, African-American people um, have a higher incident and mortality rate, but there's also, you know, um, just people of color within colorectal cancer in general have a higher incident and mortality rate around colorectal cancer. And so it is definitely something that us as an organization fight colorectal cancer, we do look at the disparities that lie within colorectal cancer and try to tackle them as best as we can. I was astounded by the numbers of people affected by this. I read 50,000 people this year will die from mm -hmm. colorectal cancer. Could you maybe speak a little bit more about 
just the scope of this problem? I think it honestly lies the for me, just looking back at it, um, as far as how I've been involved, you know, with this organization and just personally for over 10 years, it lies within people getting screened and the stigma around being screened and the stigma around talking about colorectal cancer. You know, it's in a, a region that maybe most people are not comfortable with talking about. Maybe, you know, what you have to do to as far as the screening processes, um, people are not necessarily comfortable with, but we have to get to a point where we are comfortable with it because it is, again, um, it's the second leading cause of cancer deaths, but it's 90% preventable through proper screening. And so those two statements don't match up. And so we really need to get on the screening and take those stigmas away um, around colorectal cancer and encourage our loved ones and our community to be screened. So is that then the biggest, yeah, the biggest bottleneck for helping people with this? Is just to get over that stigma of being screened, or are there other things that you guys are working with? Yeah, there's there's the stigma, which I think is a big part, but there's also, you know, as far as access to screening, we all know that that uh, plagues us as a nation for many diseases, but specifically around colorectal cancer, you have um, where it's dis- disproportionately. Uh, screening rates are different um, within different areas, rural areas, you know, are affected um, about as far as screening for colorectal cancer, the access to get screened is less for rural. Um, So access to screening is absolutely a huge, a huge area that we need to work on around colorectal cancer, because you can scream it all day long to go and get screened. But if that access is not there for that person who hears you, you failed. Yeah. So let's say someone gets screened then, and because your organization is not only providing research and raising awareness for people to get screens, you're also uh, interacting with people and I guess families around someone that is getting diagnosed. What kind of work is Fight CRC doing in that area? Um, Specific to supporting families. And yeah, yeah, Yeah. we have our, um, well, we always try to host events where we can bring our community together because I think no matter what people want when you have been diagnosed with colorectal cancer and probably you know any cancer you want to be feel that you are not alone and you want to be a part of something so we try every year to provide that opportunity for our our community our advocates our ambassadors and even our staff to get together and hear these stories and and understand how we can help our community. You know, we do a lot of focus groups to get a pulse check on our community to see what areas that we may be missing, what they're looking for to as far as support. Um, So we really lean and listen to our community on how we can help provide support for them through mainly resources. So again, we have lots of resources on our website that are free to download. Um, There's a, you know, our number one resource is our guide in the fight. Um, guide, which is a step-by-step book for from diagnosis through survivorship of colorectal cancer. But then we have our, our one-offs that are um, mini magazines that are specific topics. Um, so we have, you know, screening is one of our mini magazines. Treatments, um, treatment options is one of our mini magazines. And so we just dive into topics that are really important to our, our community. And again, I, I, I want to go back is that we really do lean on each other as a community. And once you're a part and you come to one of our events, you're basically a part of our colorectal cancer family. And we do lean on each other for support throughout the year. Yeah, I think that's that community aspect is so important because I, I can imagine it being an isolating experience being diagnosed. And now I'm different than the people around me. So to regain some of that community feeling, I can imagine is, is highly important. Yeah, absolutely. And you, and you, you know, for me as a as an advocate and now as a staff person, I'm able to really sit back and watch some of those great connections being made when you see strangers come together, but their stories are identical and that's what brings them together. And then the bonds, the friendships and the bonds that come from from this one time meeting one another, but you just have a shared story um, and the way that they will support each other. People travel with one another. They're, you know, a part of their families now. Um, And so it's just a, um, a humbling experience being a part mm. of that, I would say. So how is the research, the switching topic a little bit, but how is the research uh, moving forward when it comes to actually, because you fight to find a cure, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And um, how are we doing on that? Is that something that can realistically happen? And in that case, yeah, how does it look? Yeah, we're really passionate about um, what that means, like what does finding a cure mean for our organization? Because we feel as if we want to, our goal is to find a cure for colorectal cancer. That is our vision um, for our organization. And so um, we've recently really thought about that. What does that mean for our organization? And so we have uh, what we like to say is like a path to a cure. And so we're actually right now really looking at defining that. What does that mean? Um, how, what is what is that going to take? What is the research gonna, that is needed to really define what a path to a cure looks like? And so um, one of the areas that we that is a part of this path to a cure is looking at why people under 45 are being diagnosed with colorectal cancer. What is that? Um, because in the last five years, we've seen a, an increase of people under 45 being diagnosed with colorectal cancer. And so um, thinking that it's just a, an old person's disease is no longer. It is affecting people of all ages now. Um, and so we really need to understand the why. And so for us as an organization, that's where we really are right now is doing the research. We're working with different researchers who are researching all different types of topics um, around the why, you know, is there a a commonality between toothbrush that was used in certain generations or just little things like that, that we're really, we're willing to dive deep into all of these different areas of the research to figure out the why. Mm. Yeah, I think that's really important. It makes me think as well. So someone listening to this then, uh, what can they do personally uh, both to stay safe for themselves but also to take some kind of positive action to help uh, fight for the cure yeah well i think first and foremost um talk with your physician you know even at the age of 40 talk with your physician talk about when you should be screened what that looks like and just start preparing yourself for that Um, but then also if you feel as if there's anything happening within your body talk to your physician about that too. And maybe there's an opportunity for you to possibly be screened earlier um, if there's signs and symptoms that, that support that. But you definitely want to be having those conversations with your, with your physician and be proactive and, and be screened at the appropriate mm-hmm. time for yourself. Um, and then I also, you know, if you've been diagnosed, reach out to us, get involved. We want to hear your story. We want to share your stories. Your stories are, are powerful and they will help people. They will help um, dis- decrease the incident rates and just know that every individual story holds its power um, to help another individual around colorectal cancer. Um, So get involved with our organization, become active in our policy efforts, um, come to one of our events, meet other people in in our community. Um, And then if you can, it'd be great, donate, donate to research so we can help find a cure for colorectal cancer. Well said empowering people through their stories and yes i do encourage anyone listening to go in and support fight crc we're coming towards the end of this uh, conversation so i want to say michelle thank you so much for taking the time to speak with great today i very much appreciate it thank you so much for the opportunity appreciate it thank you and for you listening if you enjoy this conversation if you think the topic of colorectal cancer is important press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app because that is showing the algorithms that this is an important conversation. So it will spread and more and more people can get awareness of what they can do to stay safe and safe themselves, but also fight for a cure. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you in the next episode. What is great.com? That is the most common question that we get. And the shortest answer I can give you is that we are a company that is moving money from the online casino industry and donates it to charities that is helping the environment. The long answer, unfortunately, I don't have time to tell you today. But if you're curious, definitely Google whatisgreat.com to learn more.